It should be all set now. We'll just go ahead with me. So, um, welcome to the Monday, March 22nd, 2020, in the Dennis Hermuth Regional School Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, before we go to our first presentation on the Senior Capstone Project, um, I do want to take a moment, and not necessarily a moment of silence, but I'd like to give everyone a moment to um, reflect tonight a little bit on the loss of Ken Jenks. It's gonna be so hard. That's for sure. So hard to even have this meeting without him. So if there's anyone that would like to speak, please raise your hand um, amongst the panelists. I'm sure during public comment, we'll also have attendees who wanna speak. Um, but if you'd like to speak, um, please do raise your hand. Um, Phil Morris. I am almost, for me, without words, very unusual. But Ken Jenks added so much to the DY experience, but he also added so much to my life. I remember the year he started teaching. And I remember all the projects we did together, all the campaigns for overrides, for school budgets. And I watched him grow as not just a, 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 an educator, but as a good friend. And I really feel like I've lost a part of my family, part of my own inheritance of, of good people. And I, the best I can do is feel like I've been rewarded with meeting somebody special and I carry the gift of interaction with about him for the rest of my life. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, Phil. Um, Jim, were you raising your hand? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, uh, I. Ken was one of the first people I met when I first came to the school committee. And prior to that, I had met him at, uh, my son had gone to the high school for three years. And he's just a fabulous gentleman. And like Phil, I consider him a great friend. Uh, in fact, the last conversation I had with him, uh, and he knew he was being, going in for surgery, and the last question he asked me was how my wife was doing. That was the type of man he was. He's just a perfect gentleman, a great friend, and a tremendous loss to the district. Thank you. Joe. Thank you, Jenny. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, I, I, I've known Ken for 37 years. Um, I, I it, probably a lot of you've heard or whatever. I, I was in his, one of his first classes when he was literally little Kenny Jenks. Um, and he, 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 uh, from that day, again, you, you don't realize this stuff until, you know, years afterwards of how some teachers have a profound, um, knack of being able to, to get into you and, and have you understand and, and, to learn and that, that's what he was about. And it wasn't necessarily about the, the stuff that you were, the, the subject matter, but it was more about, you know, other things and, and growing up and having all my kids go through the district and having Ken for a, a principal, um, he was always just, you know, great with the kids. I've never seen a person have a better rapport with his students. Um, 
than Ken. He always, it didn't matter. You know, um, you know, I, I could tell story after story and I could be here all night doing it, but I don't want to. Um, but, you know, in, in, we've, in the past few years, working with the building committee, um, Carol and Ken and I have had two or three opportunities to drive to Boston and back for MSBA meetings. And you'd think in those meetings, we'd be talking about the school and blah, 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 but no. We talked about our families. We talked about, you know, what was going on, you know, in the world, in, in politics and things like that. And it wasn't about necessarily the school and what was going on. It was about who we were, the people, um, you know, I, on my desk, I have a, a thing, a stone that says, um, my life is my message. And that's exactly what Ken emulated. Ken's message was his life. And what he gave to this district was his life. Um, he lived for this district every day. And, you know, I'm sure you can ask Brenda that. And you, Carol can tell you the same thing, that everything he did from day one, seven days a week sometimes, was, was for this school district. Um, it, you know, it, it, as much as we miss him, I, I can just imagine what his family's, you know, going through now. And um, he's going to be sorely missed by us and by the district and by me. Um, but his family is going to miss him, too. So um, it's going to be tough to go on. But we'll, we'll go on. We've got Ken behind us. So thank you very much, Jenny. Um. Yeah, I think the only, I'll have to try to find something funny to say so I can get through this, but I think the only people, the only person I ever met that didn't appreciate Ken Chanks um, were the custodians at DY my first year because um, his room was impassable um, and unable to be vacuumed or cleaned or dusted um, because he allowed a group of us and he did this for many years to call his room, you know, our home for the year. And, you know, um, it was piled with books and games and all of our stuff. Um, you know, he was a friend, a teacher, a mentor, a father figure for many students. Um, and he was, my teacher, my friend, my mentor as a student, and then to me also as a school committee member. You know, he was one of the first people I went to when I was considering running. Um, and his support for me, for this district was unending, so. Anyone else? Carol? Like uh, a lot of the rest of you, I could probably talk all night about all the things that made Ken who he was and why he was so special to so many people. Um, I have to tell you, he was one of the best work partners I've ever had. Um, extremely capable, as you all know, and extremely humble all the time. Uh, a funny story. Uh, I don't know if he'd mind me telling you this, but the first year that he first came to central office, uh, every week he wanted me to fire him. <laughs> it's a lot different coming to central office and being the business director than it is being a principal. And he'd come in and he'd close the door and he'd sit down and he'd say, you should fire me now. And we'd have a talk about that and why it was and whatever. And I'd say, oh, that's not a fireable offense. Keep going. You're doing great. And um, by the end of the first year, I said, okay, are you done? Are you done resigning? Are you done getting fired? Come on. You've had a whole year. You got this. Um, but what I always think about were the kinds of things, like if we'd had a tough meeting somewhere, wherever, um, he, he was always asking, like, what can I do better? How can I do better? What can I do better? How can I help? And then, of course, the ever famous line, it's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. It's all good. And for our students, 
and I, this is the thing that sticks out to me about Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School and the district as a whole. We can get you there, no matter what your interests, no matter what your challenges, this school district can get its students there. And it's a credit to many of the people I see here on the screen. And I guess finally, and I know they know it, but I just wanna thank Brenda and Liz and Alex and Vicki and Sophia for all the times they shared their, their husband, their dad, their grampy. And I know how, how very important Sophia was to Ken. Um, they had a lot of special moments and uh, he was, she was really the apple of his eye. So I miss him every day. Uh, it's hard to come to the office now without him here, but I know that he's kind of living with me in my heart. So thank you, Jenny, for this opportunity. Anybody else? And to something that you'd be very, very proud of. We're going to have a presentation from Paul, uh, Dale, and Lisa on the Senior Capstone Project. And I think, Lisa, you'll share your screen. <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, for having me here tonight, I think um, on this on this evening, as we recognize Ken, I reserve my comments for the beginning of my address here. Um, you know, Ken and Carol are um, two of the reasons that I came to DY, um, and I think he, you know, was instrumental in supporting me with the work-based learning program and um, the new initiatives, the Capstone Project um, course, and I think he would be very, very proud of our achievements thus far um, and be happy to hear you know how far we've come since September so thank you for the time tonight I want to just give you some highlights we of course are not finished given that it is March we have um, the remainder of term three and four to finish with the capstone project course but I wanted to give you an update of where we were at and what some of our students are doing um, thus far I want to start also by saying this initiative is 100% collaborative. I know that um, often the person who speaks um, to you and to the public on behalf of our students, but I couldn't do any part of my job without the input of the school counseling department, without the support of Paul, or Dr. Funk, Mrs. Woodbury. Um, and so I think it's really important that this you know, people understand that this initiative is built on collaboration internally, externally with businesses and organizations, um, educational tools and resources. And I, I can't believe how many people have actually been part of this initiative to date. And I know that there's going to be many more um, for the remainder of the year. And then as you know, we, we progress with this initiative in the future. So, so far um, when we met back um, in the fall, since then we have designed and tweaked the full program components. Um, we have held three student and parent information sessions via Zoom. Um, virtually, of course, when we were not, um, you know, in person at that point in time. Um, we have invited all students to complete a student goal survey, which was designed to give us some input about what college and career readiness initiatives they have completed to date, um, and for them to voice some um, goals that they would like to achieve during their capstone project course. Um, once we received those goals, each um, school counselor provided some course and project recommendations based on the input and relationships that they had built with students since oftentimes the eighth grade. Um, they had a good idea of you know, what their post-secondary plans were going to be, and then maybe the course requirements that may, needed to complete second half of the year prior to gradually, uh, graduation. So it was really important that we had that school counselor input um, since I was just meeting many of these students for the first time. To date, um, there are 139 students participating in the Capstone Project course this semester, which is amazing. Um, I, 
I don't know. I think I thought maybe 50, 60. I'm not really sure, but we've come a long way and we are at 139 students that are engaged in some type of college and career readiness um, initiative this semester. Those students all had individual um, one-to-one meetings with myself, um, either in person or remote to again, discuss um, what they had completed for college and career readiness initiatives to date, what their plans were, what their courses might look like for obligation second semester, um, what their you know work uh, requirements might be if they already had a job. Um, and we just discussed anything and anything in terms of what they might like to do with their time in order to help transition from DY into either college, a career pathway, um, or military um, placement. So 52 students are actually taking a dual enrollment course, a college level course, um, either at Cape Cod Community College or Mass Maritime. Now we've always had these initiatives, but we have not had that many students um, participate or engage in a dual enrollment course. I think the reason the increase is because um, Cape Cod Community College offered some grant funds due to COVID this semester to offer two of their core um, requirements, transferable credits, free of charge to our students, which was a wonderful collaboration and outcome of this COVID times um, that they supported our students. Um, I think also the flexibility in the student schedules um, permitted them to be able to engage in those courses because students might have been interested in the past, but their schedules, you know, conflicted and they weren't able to participate in those um, experiences. Those courses are taking place remotely as well. So transportation um, is not necessarily an issue this semester um, either. So that's 14 different college level courses, 15, 52 students are taking this semester, um, which is just an excellent, excellent outcome of this initiative. Um, we created a MyCap um, tracking system um, for all capstone project tasks and assignments, not only for seniors. Um, we started with seniors, but then um, Dale said, ah, why don't we do it for everybody? <laughs> you know, Dale, if it benefited one student, we decided it would benefit all. So we started with designing um, a way to track um, and to ensure that obviously students were completing all of their capstone project initiatives and assignments. But we're also going to use it beginning in the eighth grade um, to track participation in all college and career readiness initiatives so that in the future, by the time they become a senior, um, we will have a record of all those initiatives and I won't have to be going back and asking students to recall, you know, everything that they engaged in um, in terms of advising and counseling curriculum um, over the course of their high school career. So that was a really um, unexpected outcome and a great tool um, that we are using um, to monitor progress, completion, um, and to communicate not only with students, but with parents. Students um, and parents have access to that information and Naviance. Um, and hopefully to build a uh, common language and vocabulary around college and career readiness skills that by the time a student becomes a senior, um, they will be able to vocalize uh, more clearly um, and make connections in terms of their experiences um, during high school to connect to their post-secondary plans. We've also launched uh, work-based learning opportunities in Naviance, which I'm going to show you in just a second on my second slide, um, as a way to communicate any and all uh, work-based learning opportunities for seniors, um, but is also a tool that we will be using with the younger grades in the future. 32 students are taking career credit courses, so they're actually earning credit for working 20 or more hours. Um, we have students that are working towards uh, voters licenses. We have students that are working in um, related industries that they hope to transition into um, upon graduation. And so we've allowed them to start early to work towards um, licensure hours and to earn money um, at this point in time um, since they'll be segueing into those positions in the future. We have 55 students who are engaged in a work experience, so they might be working um, and they might be getting paid, but it may not be in an industry that they are pursuing in the future, but they, of course, are learning employability skills, workplace readiness skills, um, communication skills, um, and saving money for their post-secondary or independent living plans upon graduation. 
We have five students that took advantage of a new initiative this year, which was the high school educator internship program with grant funds that were provided by DESE in collaboration with the Cape and Islands Mass Hire uh, Workforce Board. And so we have students who are interested in pursuing educator pathways in the future, um, who are working in remote capacities within district classrooms to gain classroom and teaching experience. And again, they get paid um, up to 100 hours for those internship hours this semester. We have one student who uh, secured a placement in a healthcare um, facility at Bass River Pediatrics, um, and she's working an average of 10 hours per week. Um, and she started the first week of the new term in February. Um, we have five students who are completing an ArtWorks internship, um, again, in collaboration with Mass Hire, Cape and Islands. Um, and we have a variety of independent projects. Um, informational interviews, independent studies, um, students, as we have said, who are pursuing industry certifications in the boating industry, construction, uh, personal training, nutrition. Um, we have a young woman who is writing a book in collaboration with Ms. Kosher. We have students who um, are working you know, on independent projects to develop uh, video games, software, um, whatever their dreams and aspirations are. Um, they've been given um, a format and a context to work on, um, you know, and have the time and space to work on that during their capstone project time. Um, term three curriculum assignments have included career inventories. If a student was new to our district, hadn't started in the eighth grade, they might have had some um, career assessments that they needed to complete prior to graduation. Um, every senior um, who's participating in this initiative will graduate with a high school resume completed and uploaded into Naviance. Um, not only is that useful, obviously, for college applications, but for the scholarship searches and applications students are working on right now. And then, of course, you know, employment, um, which will be having some career fair opportunities for them this spring. Um, students have to complete work hour verifications. If they're getting paid, they have to provide pay stubs. Otherwise, they're documenting and reporting um, their hours through Google Forms. And then we have completed um, two of the personal financial literacy modules that, again, was in collaboration with Mass Hire, Cape and Islands. Um, they created three modules to help students um, learn personal finance uh, management. And we are using those um, throughout the spring semester to provide students with those independent um, budgeting and finance skills, credit card interest, those kinds of skills um, throughout the semester. So you can see on the right, the slide on the right is just um, a snapshot of the collaborations to date. Of course, I did not have the space or the time to list all 55 employers that our students are working at right now um, and our classroom teachers that are supporting the educator placements at DY um, and the artwork placements. There are um, several, several placements um, that our students are working at at this time. I have one more slide. Um, I just have to switch here. I don't know if there's any questions you can ask along the way, but I wanted to just show you um, really quickly um, what the um, work-based learning um, initiatives um, look like in Naviance for students. So we have been able to promote um, webinars, guest speakers, field trips, virtual field trips, if you will. There's not too many in person at this point in time, but an individual student could do a company tour if it's one-to-one -one and, and COVID regulations permits them to do so. Um, we have, you know, career fairs. We have a job fair that's coming up with South Shore Mass Hire that students will be able to engage in. Um, and so we're able to post these initiatives and then we have a variety of job opportunities. So anytime um, a community partner or an employer notifies us of a part-time position, seasonal position for a student, we're putting that into Naviance um, and we are creating event cards that look like your screen on the left. It has all the information links to apply um, so students can access this information from home. Um, we've notified students and parents in the senior class about these opportunities. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity since the public to invite you know, all businesses and community members if they have openings um, this spring 
or seasonal help in the summer, um, that we have students who are looking for work and would love to be engaged. And you can email me those opportunities and I'll create the event cards like you see on the left to promote and um, connect students with the application process. And that's all I have for you at this time. There's a lot more to come. I should say, let me, I guess in closing, say there's a lot more to come term four. Um, we are just a little bit over halfway of term three. So we still have one more full term to come. Um, we've got an after acceptance workshop that will be for all college bound seniors in collaboration with Wheaton College, preparing students for all the things that they have to do after admissions through enrollment. Um, we're actually creating industry chats as well. Um, we're in the development stages, but Ms. Fornoff um, posted um, you know, an all call to alumni, if you will, through LinkedIn and our Facebook page to invite um, DY alumni to um, have an industry chat or an informational interview with our students since uh, true or full internship placements are hard to come by this semester. We're trying to connect students to mentors as um, much as we can. And we're going to be setting up a schedule where students can log in and talk to um, some alumni in related industries to learn more about um, how they you know, got to where they are and became successful. Um, we're also going to be having a credit for life fair with Cape Cod 5. We're happy um, that they were able to create a virtual format. We weren't sure if it was going to be possible this year. So even though it's later than we um, typically have scheduled it in the past, we're really happy to be able to offer this virtual opportunity for seniors um, during term four and, and more information is going to come, but we're grateful for that collaboration. And lastly, I think it was you, Ms. Landers, who um, when we came in the fall said you, you know, and it made us think some visual outcome, some type of visual representation of all the work that these students are doing. So their final project is going to have to be to create a virtual, um, you know, uh, it's a virtual slide or something visual, I should say, and we will put together a slideshow um, showing all of the students' um, work. So thank you for that suggestion. We took that to heart. And I think, um, you know, we're looking forward to seeing lots of pictures um, and outcomes from students. And of course, we'll share that um, publicly um, for, for you and for our DUI community to see as well at the end of the year. <laughs> I don't know if you have any questions, I'm open to that, or I just want to thank you again for the time and the space to be creative, and I appreciate your time. Lisa, do you want to stop the screen share? Absolutely, thank you. Phil hey. Morris here, uh, I want to thank you for the presentation, but I'm doubly impressed with the growth of the program in the midst of a pandemic. I've just uh, known the good work that you and your predecessors have done and what mm -hmm. the kids benefit from it. Uh, once again, proving that I was born too soon. The, uh, how have you been able to pull this off and get the, get the support and the action from students with the fear of a, of a pandemic hovering over the uh, in the corners. Very impressive. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I think, you know, we're just equally as surprised if I can just say that, you know, we had a vision in, in so many ways, you know, we've, we've gone beyond even that vision and we've been able to thrive. Um, and I think it's because of the students, you know, we got motivated by the students' feedback and their suggestions and their ideas and their connections. You know, we, we've learned that we're not the only ones with connections. So when the students were given the time and the space to utilize their own networks, to set up placements and to find jobs and, um, and they were meaningful to them and it didn't conflict with their schedule, um, it just, just, kept growing. Um, and, and I think we still see more potential beyond this once we're past this COVID era. So Lisa, let me just jump in there real quick. Um, this is as student-centered as you can get when you talk about student-centered student curriculum or student-driven. Lisa had mentioned she met individually with each student and then developed their own learning, learning plan in relation to what they wanted to pursue. Um, you can't get any more specific. And if that's one of the types of curriculum that we're always trying to find ways 
to find out what makes kids go. Well, Lisa did it individually with each kid. And now those kids are bought in. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of the work. And I had said this before we started. This is one of the positives. There's going to be positives that come out of the pandemic. There's definitely going to be positives. And we're going to pull all those positives out when we can. This is definitely one of the positives. We have kids taking those college courses. And I, I'm Joe knows I, I like to fish and I got a boat. I would be right next to those two kids that are getting their captain's license. Uh, they're getting real world experience. So, you know, from a principal standpoint, I think it worked because of all the hard work that Lisa put in, but also the way she like met with each kid. Uh, it's a unique process. Um, she just did a super job and we're on the cutting edge. I mean, this is uh, DY in, in the future. Um, we're going to be able to just really build on this. I, I'm, a, I'm so excited about this program. Thank you. And I just have to say, I appreciate that. And I do appreciate you um, recognizing my effort. And it was hard work, but, you know, um, struck going back to something that Ms. Woodbury said in terms of the team and her and Ken and their relationship. And I think it is so important. Dale couldn't be with us here today, but Dale and I have been working on this idea for eight, nine years. Every conference we've gone to and you've invested in us, every workshop that we've intended, you know, Dale and I would write down a couple of ideas and then and we'd say, okay, when the schedule is different, when the schedule is different, you know, we want this to be for all kids, not just students who can take it during C and G period or, you know, D and E. And so the opportunity out of COVID was to rethink this schedule in the way, you know, it was given to us. And then we just said, aha, this is the way to make college and career readiness for all students. Um, and it, and it, it's not the same standard for every student. We have students who are taking, you know, five AP classes and they don't have as much time in their schedule. They're obligated. Their number one job is to do well and to finish strong in those AP courses. And so are they doing all of the same tasks as other students who don't have that rigorous schedule this semester? No, um, but they're doing what's relevant and important to them. Um, and that's what we learned was the key here was finding out you know, with the one semester they have left, what do students need? What are they interested in? Um, and how can we, you know, rally these community supports um, outside of DY, community connections um, and resources to help them make that transition to prepare them better. So I do just, I have to say, I, it, is, it is a team <laughs> because this is, although I might've been the one really running with it this year, that we, I can show you the notebooks, the plans, the drafts, the charts, the visuals, Dale and I would draw out about what well, could we do this? Could we do this? So um, again, we wouldn't have been able to if you didn't support us at the superintendent level and the principal level. And if the school counselors didn't do their individual pieces and if the students didn't. Um, and their parents were supportive as well. Um, and so we're, we want to, you know, recognize their um, support in this as well. The, support, the, the parents really supported this initiative too. Thank you. Jennifer? Thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to say that I was happy to hear that there was an uptick in a lot of the different programs. Um, that just seems like it just was obviously a lot of the hard work put in on your end and then the students um, captivating their attention and their, you know, and I think it has a lot to do with the different avenues as well, not just education, but having the avenues of the career experience, the uh, trades, the licenses um, and all those other things and um, having the work experience for the soft skills. I think that's very um, important because that's just something that all of us need to learn um, because soft skills are just um, so important in the workplace, no matter where you are. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, I have a daughter who went right through the program with you. So um, we got to experience it firsthand. So it's, it's very beneficial for the, for the students. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Joe Tierney. Thank you, Jenny. Um, yeah, a couple, couple comments and a question. Um, I, you know, I think honestly that the, uh, the function of this, the success during the pande pandemic is the fact that it was such a great program to begin with, you know, and I think it was, it was great coming in to COVID and then it just exploded, you know, with, with your Lisa and um, Dale's vision, like you said, you know, you thought this and um, I think it's, you know, 
it's amazing. You know, I, I've, I've had a lot of, I don't want to say older people because I don't know if I qualify as old yet, but whatever. Um, I've had a lot of the older people say, well, geez, they need to bring back home economics and auto shop and, and you know, wood shop and all this stuff, which is, which is true. But quite honestly, I think this is a, a great replacement because it gives those students that opportunity to really get out into the real world and look and see what the, what it's, what it's like, you know, they get that real world experience. They get, you know, people that want to deal with the auto automotive side, they go in there and they're with, with those mechanics and with those people, um, you know, and it's, it's a real world experience. So it's almost better the fact that, you know, we have this and, and you know, I applaud yours and Dale's efforts on everything. Um, Lisa, what are your thoughts on if and when we get back to, I don't know, normal, um, how this is going to still flourish? I mean, I, I can't see you going back to the same old, you know, two days here, two days there, you know, two days in the classroom. I, I'm sure that you must have some thoughts of how you can take what, how this has grown from here and, and make it still terrific, which it is. So I didn't know what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, I mean, I think um, in terms of the curriculum and a lot of or several of the experiences that are virtual, you know, we'll continue to be able to do those pieces. Um, and then th with creative scheduling, I know there's a couple different scenarios and it's not finalized yet, but um Yes, I would say we have some ideas. We will continue to commit to it. I think it's just a little bit early to say, but I, there's a couple of different formats we could do. Um, you know, st students could be scheduled for this the last period of the day, the last two periods of the day, and then they, they released to do it then. I mean, there's a couple of different scenarios that we could work through. Um, it could be a shorter period of time. They could rotate through um, in cohorts. There's, there's a couple of scenarios, but I think we've, we've done um, the work in terms of the curriculum and the content and how to deliver that um, to a whole class, even if they weren't sitting right in front of you. Um, and we're building the culture um, in Naviance using that tool from eighth grade through 12th grade so that as we progress over the years, it will be more second nature for students by the time they become a senior and it won't be as you know labor intensive to teach them and train them how to do it now. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Joe Glenn. Hi. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. I, I, you mentioned and I identified with the fact that you said that you've been thinking about it for nine years. And, and I've been thinking about these pathways. And I agree with Dr. Funk. Um, and I had said it in the beginning that we were going to have a lot of challenges during this period but it was gonna give us a lot of opportunities. And, uh, and I agree that this is gonna be one of those things. I also uh, agreed with Ms. Farnoff that, uh, that my cap tracking um, and opening it up, I think that you're gonna have a snowball effect and I can see it in your face and your excitement. And it's mm -hmm. the same excitement for me that the ideas keep coming, the kids are involved, the parents are involved and I think as you go back towards the eighth grade and when you were in, in the fall, um, the, uh, I raised this question to the superintendent um, for lack of a better word that uh, Dr. Funk can appreciate developing the farm team program and that culture you talk about to go back even into the middle school. So now the parents are, are looking forward to it. And I know you're working from the capstone down um, because you have so much, you have so many ideas and the kids have ideas and, and it gets developed, but I can't tell you how excited I am because these are the educational outcomes that we'll be able to tangibly see in the kids as they, you know, sometimes they go off and we don't see them again. Um, and they're doing wonderful things in their lives, but we'll be able to see those people throughout the community in all different levels and all different types of work. So uh, kudos on a job well done. Keep up the great work. I, I, uh, I really can't emphasize how excited I am because I really think these are the type of things that's gonna put uh, DY really above where people will, will say this program and they'll be talking about it and you'll create the culture outside of the school 
the, and the excitement to say they got something going there. So thanks again, I, and thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Anybody else question for Lisa before we let her go? Jim Dykeman? I would like to thank you, uh, Lisa. Uh, I think it was a great presentation, and I think both the, thank Gail and yourself as well for all the hard work you put in in the last nine years. It's tremendous. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you very much. Successful program. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, our next item of business are reports. And first, our reports from our student representatives, please. Okay, so um, right now the BY band is fundraising for their next coming years and everything, because right now typically they usually fundraise in person and like they do cash drives and everything, but it's really not feasible right now. So what they decided to do, um, they, uh, partnered with um, this organization and they're selling DY apparel that's not specifically to band members but to anyone um, in the DY community um, and if anyone wants to order them you can go to dyband.org um, and there's a form right on the opening page that you can fill out and get the DY merch. Also um, theater is back and they had their first rehearsal today. And Grace? Thank you, Tynan. I'm reporting more on the sports side of things this week. As some of you may have heard, Doc, excuse me, Principal Funk mentioned early before the meeting began, the football team won their first game against Felm with an overtime, which is pretty incredible. It's really amazing after their season got pushed up by several months to see them just succeeding and succeeding so well. Same for the volleyball team. They have now beat Barnstable twice, and that is a very big deal. Barnstable has always been our biggest competitor. They, it, it has been numerous years before we have been able to beat them. So this school pride has been running high this week. You can say that for sure. All right, thank you both for your reports. Um, any reports from liaisons to the boards of selectmen this week? Joe Glenn? Yes, um, so there was two meetings of the armored selectmen. Um, I just want to point out that um, several of the uh, Yarmouth selectmen, and I'm sure the sentiment was with all of them, but they were very emotional um, and extended help to the district in any way because of our loss uh, uh, on our budget and, and our loss overall um, that is respected throughout the community as everyone well knows. Um, so, but the, the, the selectmen and the, uh, they, they offered, uh, and I think Dennis did also, the Yarmouth finance director at Santiago, and I think Mr. Lawton, the interim town administrator uh, said that both towns were we're going to help compiling any information or any data or any other information, uh, any administrative help that uh, they would be there uh, and come together for the district. So, um, I, but they were very emotional and uh, it goes well beyond uh, uh, the sentiments here that were said tonight so eloquently. Um, so I just wanted to extend that. The Yarmouth, um, uh, town meeting kind of got flip-flopped. Um, so the election is still going to be, uh, the annual town election is still going to be May 18th. Um, and I think the town meeting is the 22nd, but it's definitely after, uh, or I don't, I, I'm not going to say it definitely, but they were proposing that the annual town meeting was going to be before, I mean, the annual election was going to be for the town meeting, which kind of changes some things if there's an override. Um, but I understand they can do a one twelve budget and and it, it might be helpful in some ways. But uh, just for everyone to be aware that 
it's kind of um, flip flopped uh, or it appears to be flip flopping. So stay tuned on that. But that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, Joe, do you have a building committee report or will that be covered later? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll cover that later. We just, we just had a meeting, just finished up our meeting just before the school committee meeting. Um, we've got some exciting, exciting news and we'll just wait till we get to that point. Okay. Um, so Thanks. The best. All right. So we'll move into the superintendent's report then. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, as you all know, that we've had kind of a, I, I'd say a very successful uh, opening in terms of bringing our students back to in-person learning. Uh, certainly in uh, grades K to seven, we have about 85% of our kids have been attending in person for a large majority of the school year. Um, and recently the uh, governor and the commissioner have, um, in particular, the commissioner went before his board uh, to change up the regulations and to um, get more students back in person. Um, I really think this has a lot to do with districts who struggled to get their kids in, but in our case, we have to pay attention to it as well. And um, so we are, um, we have put out a survey in uh, the younger grades right now uh, to find out who, uh, which children are home uh, doing remote learning who might want to return to school. And there are some deadlines with the commissioner of April 5th for elementary and um, April 28th for middle school to get kids back. Um, so we're gonna have some, some additional work to do if more students uh, are interested in returning. Parents do still have the option of uh, keeping their students in remote learning for the remainder of the school year. So we will see how the surveys uh, come out and we'll have some work to do around that. So while this is all happening, uh, an interesting phenomenon has occurred. More people are being vaccinated. Uh, things across the state seem pretty in pretty good shape. More things are being opened. And now all of a sudden there seems to be a bit of a, an uptick in COVID cases across the Cape, um, which is a little bit concerning, um, particularly um, Barnstable, Yarmouth, uh, have seen a pretty significant uptick. So after some conversations uh, with our nurse leader, we contacted the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education just to see if they could perhaps give us a hand with some, with some um, COVID testing. Uh, what we're concerned about so far, we have not seen any in-school spread still. We're still in a good place that way, but we would like to keep it that way. So uh, we have been offered a free uh, mobile testing unit to come down this week. Uh, it will be here uh, at the Mattakees Middle School on Wednesday. And I'm going to be getting something out to parents. I worked on it today, but it's not quite finished because I was waiting uh, for some additional information from the testing uh, group. Uh, but that will be from 12 to six. So this will be open to all students, all um, teachers, and all family members. So all we will need is for people to show up. And for example, the kids at middle school could actually have testing within the school day as long as they bring in a signed permission uh, from their parents. The parents wouldn't have to be there. Um, then on Friday, the 26th, we will have the same thing at uh, the uh, high school. And also because we're in a hybrid situation with our high school, we will have another one on Monday, uh, the 29th. So we feel kind of out of an abundance of caution more than anything else because the, the uptick is a little bit concerning. Uh, we are very interested in keeping our kids in person in school. And even at the high school, Dr. Funk and his team have done a great job of bringing more kids back. It's, it's more than a 50-50 situation. More kids have come back based on some parent requests, kids maybe that um, we're having a harder time in remote than others. And also all of our specialized programs are kids with um, IEPs who might need some extra support have been uh, brought back thanks to the, the good work of the high school and getting more kids in. Of course, we'd like to see more of those kids in. And so we'd like to make sure that we're going to keep COVID at bay. And in order to do that, we feel like this testing program is very important. Um, and it will maybe just put us all at ease. And maybe there's not as much out there as we really think, but it's just kind of an irony that we 
you know, we were like, what's going on? More people are vaccinated, more, um, we haven't had a lot of outbreaks, um, but we have quite a few uh, now, more than we've had all year. So we wanna do this out of an abundance of caution. So that's really where we are. I'd also like to thank Lisa, Dale, and of course, Dr. Funk and all the high school team. Great presentation. Um, this is a program that's near and dear to my heart for sure. And uh, job well done. And um, you can be assured, Ms. Uh, Mr. Glenn, that uh, down at our middle school level, our two middle school counselors are doing a lot with um, career, career readiness, uh, just in terms of trying to get our kids ready to move up to the high school. And I know that there'll be a great bridge between the middle school and the high school. And pretty soon, it won't be long, they'll be on the same campus. So that'll be very exciting. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you very much. All right, well, speaking of being on the same campus, uh, we have some school committee business tonight. The um, Dennis Sherman Intermediate Middle School vote to approve the contract. And do we have a representative from the building committee who's presenting this? Yeah, um, yeah, some, some exciting news. I think what, what we could do is have, um, if we could just have Chad uh, Critter from PMA, our, our uh, project uh, managers to just kind of go over the, the, the bids and just kind of how the, um, the building committee came up, you know, with their decision um, to recommend to the school committee who we, uh, who we feel would, would do the best for the school. Um, this is just a super exciting time. And, um, you know, it, this is going to be, this is going to be great. It's, this is, this is really happening. So I'm, I'm excited. So um, Chad, I don't know if you want to just um, have some, you know, words or, or some information for us before we, uh, Make that motion. Chad, do you need screen share? Sure. Um, nope, I can just talk through it and if there are any questions, I can uh, pull up any relevant information. Um, everybody can hear me okay, right? All right. Um, good evening. Thank you for having us. We do have some uh, very exciting news tonight. So the school building project opened up bids on Tuesday of last week, March 16th, from uh, pre-qualified general contractors. Uh, late last year, we went through the pre-qualification process, so we uh, put that out on the street and we accepted uh, applications from 103 pre-qualified general and sub-filed subcontractors. Uh, out of that, 103 applicants were six general contractors, and last Tuesday, five of those six general contractors submitted bids on the project. Uh, the budget from our MSBA funding agreement uh, is $93.7 million dollars. The low bid was 83.3 million. So that represents a, a savings of $10.4 million, uh, which is terrific news. And uh, so better news is three out of the five low bids are actually within 1% of each other. Uh, so even the number three bid is almost a full $10 million below the authorized budget. Uh, what that tells us when we see the numbers clustered together like that is that we have a, an excellent set of documents and uh, they're there's little room for ambiguity, so we should have a, a nice clean scope. And um, with this information, the school building committee voted to uh, select CTA construction as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder. Uh, so with this committee's approval, um, we would be entering into an agreement with CTA construction for an amount of $83.3 million. We did have four alternates that were included with the bid, but they were included with the bid purely as pricing protection. Um, everyone knows the, the history of this project and uh, what it went through a year or two ago now. And uh, we wanted to make sure that when we opened these bids, we were able to execute a contract. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market with the, the uh, pandemic. Uh, fortunately, we're not in a position where we need to exercise any of that pricing protection. So the recommendation is to not accept any of the deduct alternates. Um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Phil Morris. I uh, had the pleasure uh, to do a lot of hard work with the building committee, uh, along with uh, Jim Dykeman and Joe Tierney. And uh, uh, there were 39 participants in a Zoom meeting, of which uh, 17 were building committee members. And therefore, the recommendation is to, from the building committee, uh, is to award the bid to CTA Construction. And I would make that in the form of a motion that the school committee 
uh, endorse and accept that recommendation. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Do we have some questions, I imagine, for Chad or the building committee? Joe? Yeah, th thank you, Jenny. Um, I'd like to, a uh, couple things. I'd like to really thank um, Sandy Cash and, and uh, Kurt Sears um, for stepping up. They're the two building committee members that um, worked with PMA to work through the, the, the bidders and, and get those um, six or five final bidders down to, um, you know, so they, they, they did a lot of work to, to be able to get to this point. So I really just wanted to publicly thank them. Um, you know, our meeting, you know, I thought it was going to be a five minute meeting where we we're going to make a decision <laughs> done, but there was a lot of discussion um, about some different things of why we're choosing this, um, this bidder and over another one. And, you know, we, we, we talked about this and, and went around and around for a while. Um, it was a really good discussion. So I think we really vetted um, them out as best we could um, as a group. So I'm confident that, you know, with this recommendation, we'll, we'll be able to go forward um, and see that. So thank you. Thanks. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not saying that we have to spend, a, you know, the full budget, obviously saving money is fantastic. Um, and we would be saving both towns and all taxpayers um, by coming in, you know, 10 million under under budget. But are there things that were cut um, that can now be added back in um, now that we've got these bids or how does that work? So that is something that, um, that we are looking at. So the first step once the contract is executed would be to um, complete what's called the PFA bid amendment with the MSBA. Uh, as part of that PFA bid amendment process, the MSBA will ask what the district wants to do with its share of the project savings. Um, there may be or there should be an opportunity to take some of that savings and apply it towards some of that scope that was, was previously cut. We would just uh, have to understand the MSBA would not have to include those costs. Um, they wouldn't have either way. It's, uh, anyway, because we are over the cost cap for the MSBA, so there's there's really no impact to the bottom line. But yeah, we'll we'll absolutely look at that. We just need to get through the PFA bid amendment process uh, with the MSBA first. So does MSBA have to approve this contractor now? This contract and contractor? Nope. Um, so next steps on my end, I've uh, drafted the contract. I'm going to click send as soon as uh, this meeting is complete, and the contractor has five days to return an executed copy. Uh, and then from there, we should see some movement and activity on the seat, uh, on the site within a couple of weeks. So they already have an anticipated start date in that contract? Um, so it depends on when the district is able to turn around the fully executed copy, but uh, that's what will start the, the timeline, yep. But I mean, in terms of shovels and ground, yeah, it's it's around. If I had to guess, maybe three weeks away. So we may see okay. uh, some temporary fencing and stuff like that in advance of that. But where there's a lot of tree clearing, I think that the restricting factor is going to be their uh, Department of Ar of Environmental Protection 10-day notice. So once okay. they receive the contract award, they'll file that permit, and that's when major work on the site can really begin. Maybe some small things that we can do before then, but uh, that's that's what's going to be the uh, allow them to go full scale. No, also, Jenny, we we uh, we realized some of the savings. If we remember in the bond issue that we had, we saved a lot of money um, there. So, I mean, you know, what was it like 0.03 percent or something like that, or you know, it was some ridiculous. Basically, it was free. Right. Plus uh, a rebate on, the, I believe, well, was a, right. We, yeah, so we were able to you know recoup back some money from that, which is um, which is great. So you know, all around, it's it's knock on wood. Um, we've we've uh, been able to, to save some some money here. Another pandemic silver lining, I suppose. Possibly, yeah. Um, Joe Glenn. Yes, uh, I just wanted to thank the, everybody that was involved in the building committee and and uh, uh, the subcommittee here, but uh, everybody involved. Um, it's great to see uh, great things come. Um, Joe, I had a question to you, the chair, uh, Madam Chair. Um, the, uh, there are, uh, is there anything that, that the building committee has on the top of their head that they would, uh, move up to, to, uh, 
spend that money or to to uh, I'm, I'm not getting what not getting out what I'm trying to say, but that 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 uh, things that we could we weren't going to be able to do that we're going to put back into the to the uh, project. Yeah, no, I, I think once we get once we get back from the MSBA, you know, if they say, OK, what do you want to do? Then that's when the building committee will get together um, with PMA and say, OK, this these are the things that we reduced or we took out from the original project. Let's rank them in, you know, you know, money wise, you know, what what's important and what's you know, what's a priority. Um, we did pull out of a lot of a lot of different things, you know, just in the effort to, to stay within that 93 um, you know, million. So I couldn't identify anything off the top of my head, but there are a few things that were put in there and alternates and things like that, that, um, that you know, would be nice to, to put back in. So we'll, we'll, we can get that information to you as soon as we, we have to recommend that to the committee anyways. So. Right. Great. Thank you again. Bill Morris. I have to say, having served on building committees before, this is what, this has been the tightest, most, dot the I's and cross the T's uh, activity that we've done in DY. And it's been uh, more successful than our previous uh, projects because we're uh, so much of MSBA is adherence to the accounting systems. But it is not true, the rumor that we'll save money by issuing Joe Glynn a shovel. That way, we don't have to uh, uh, worry about that. So, Joe, you can relax. I'm not shovel ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Did you lose me? I'm still here. Got it. Okay, good. All right. So, um, seeing no further discussion, we have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote on this um, to approve the recommendation of the building committee to award the contract to, is it CTA? Is that the, to CTA? Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, Zane? Aye. Jim? Yes. Phil? Yes. Joe? Yes. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah. Joe Glenn? Aye. And I vote yes. All right. Unanimous vote. Thank you, Chad, for the good news. Thank you all. And thank you, Building Committee, for all the hard work on that. Thanks, Chad. All right. That is excellent news. Um, next on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. And um, on the consent agenda is a donation of 30 foam footballs to the students at Station Avenue Elementary School from Mrs. Jean Mitchell. A donation of 18 soccer balls to the students at Station Ave Elementary School from the Yarmouth Dennis Soccer Club. And then a donation of $1,155 from the Natty Fund, care of Carol Mahidi to the Dennis Yarmouth High School Athletic Department. And I see that that is um, a group of people who got together to collect donations um, as a memorial to, is it Nat, um, Nat Beaven? who passed away uh, this summer and who was um, a student athlete. So his friends and family and people got together and collected money to make this very generous donation. There is also a donation of $2,500 from the Sea Dog Group Hub to the Dennis Yarmouth High School Athletic Department. So thank you to the Sea Dog um, and thank you to the Natty Fund for those two very generous donations to the athletic department. Um, Dr. Funk, did you want to say anything about those donations? No, no, just, I think you've, you said it, Jenny, just we're very appreciative, especially in this time. Um, you know, Nat was a student athlete at DY back in the early 2000s. Um, so it was nice to see his, his um, teammates, friends, and under the direction of Carol Mahady um, to provide you know, some resources for the athletic department going forward. And then of course, um, uh, the Sea Dog and Pete Lucido, who was a uh, former uh, DY athlete and graduate, who's always been, you know, someone that's been uh, a real friend to DY athletics. So we are really appreciative of, um, of, of both donations. Thank you. 
Uh, also on the consent agenda are the minutes of the March 8th meeting. Does anyone move the consent agenda? Move the consent agenda. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, unanimous approval of the consent agenda. The calendar is enclosed in your packet. There are also two information items, uh, letters from our facilities director, Sandy Cashin, to Christopher McMahon of the Army Fire Department, Rachel Fleck of MEMA, um, our thanks for including us in, um, it looks like some PPE and other um, necessary supplies for the district. So we are very grateful for those. Uh, we will have a public comment period now. Um, if you would like to address the committee, please use the option on the screen to raise your hand and I will recognize you. Please state your name before you speak. You will have three minutes um, to address the committee on issues and matters either on the agenda or within our purview. Um, if you have questions, we're gonna direct you to the right person to get those questions answered. Um, so I see Vita Morris. Uh, good evening, uh, Vita Morris. Uh, first of all, I want to extend my condolences to the district and uh, to uh, the committee on such a great loss. Uh, I didn't know Ken uh, nearly as well as most of you did, uh, but to me, uh, he personified uh, uh, a gentleman, uh, which is so lacking in uh, in this world today. So. Uh, I, uh, it's going to be a, a, a very big hole to fill uh, for all of you. Uh, I did want to ask about um, uh, when last you met, there was uh, uh, an indication that the uh, finance subcommittee was going to meet on the budget. And uh, that didn't happen, of course. And uh, I'm just curious, what is the status of that? I mean, is there going to be any uh, further work done on the budget before it's presented to the Yarmouth Selectmen? We are planning to have another finance committee meeting shortly that will be posted shortly, hopefully, and we are gonna to continue to work on the budget, absolutely. Yep, that was a promise that we will continue to look for cuts and um, savings and we will do that, absolutely. Thank you. Michelle Dunn. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, Michelle Dunn, I am a fifth grade teacher at Wixon, president of the Dennis Yarmouth Educators Association. Um, I sent out an email recently to our DYEA retirees and um, just thought in case there were people who were not aware of Ken's passing. It read in part, our community is heartbroken. Ken's love for and dedication to DY was unflinching, and he served our district and community with passion for 37 years, a tenure marked by compassion, excellence, and humility. Some of you might also recall that in addition to his work as a teacher, principal, and assistant superintendent, Ken was president of the DYEA many years ago. We know that we can't fill the hole left by Ken's passing, but we can endeavor to honor him by being the best educators and citizens that we can be. I realized after I sent the email that I really should have included the word joy because no matter when you talked to Ken and no matter what you were talking about, he always found a reason to smile, to be joyful and to spread that joy. Our association awards scholarships to DY seniors each year. And we have one that is named after Dr. McCaffrey, who was my first superintendent for students pursuing a career in education. Um, I will propose at our next faculty council meeting that we name one in honor of Ken as well. And I know that there is great support for that among our members. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, would anyone else like to address the committee? All right, I don't see any other hands raised for public comment, so that will end the public comment period. Um, 
Does anyone make the motion to move to executive session? You need to read it as printed, please. Joe? I'll make the, okay. Jenny? Yes. Okay. Um, I move that Dennis Yarmouth Regional School Committee will enter into an executive session not to return to public session for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. SEIU negotiations. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote on this, please. Zane? Yes. Jim? Yes. Phil Morris? Joe Tierney? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Joe Glynn? Yes. And I vote yes. So everyone will go to the separate link for the executive session Zoom, and that ends the public portion of the meeting. Thank you, everyone.